Another unexpected side effect that could pop up from use of associative arrays has to do with the system variable it's called delete object or DEL OBJ for short. What you'll notice is when you first create an associative array, if you were to go back and erase it, as I will do with this one, the original shrub that formed the array has disappeared. And there's no way to get it back. If we oops this array back into existence, we're going to see the entire array come back in. So what I'm going to do is undo my way backwards to before this array was formed. And we'll get to the original shrub that started it. Now let's check the setting of our delete object system variable. And in order to reference this, you may just want to use the help system and look at the explanation for the delete object system variable here. What we'll see by default is that delete object is set to three, which basically says whenever an associative array is formed, it's going to consume all the original objects, paths, guide curves, anything that's actually required to form the array in the first place. If the variable is set to zero, then all the geometry that is used to form the array will be retained. And that is more what we're used to coming from a non-associative array type of behavior. So I'll go ahead and minimize the help screen here, and we'll just go ahead and do a key in on DLOBJ. And sure enough, it was set to three for default behavior. What I'll do now is go ahead and push that down to zero so that when we reform this array, the original shrub will be retained. So let's just go ahead and form the array real quickly using the centering point. I had 18 objects around a 360 degree sweep. That's the array that we would expect to see. But now when I erase the array itself, we'll see the original shrub remains. So depending on how you want the functionality to work, you may want to set your delete OBJ or DEL OBJ system variable to zero so that you retain the original geometry that forms your arrays. All there is to it.